You're listening to Procurement 6, the weekly podcast from the team at Order of Procurement that summarizes this week in procurement in just six short segments. Hi there, I'm Philip Heidson, and today is Friday, February the 4th, 2022. Six. Welcome to this week's Procurement 6. I hope that you enjoy this new format. As always, we welcome your feedback at the usual places. And this week's Procurement 6 is proudly sponsored by Zip Intake to Procure. Zip is the world's leading intake to procure solution, one place for employees to initiate a purchase or vendor request. And my tip of the week this week is a simple one. Do you have a line of sight into whether your suppliers are being paid on time? We spend so much time working on improving supplier relationships and positioning ourselves as a customer of choice, but we often do not have a process or system in place to understand when suppliers are not being paid. And this issue, getting paid on time, is one of the main drivers of how a supplier perceives working with you. For some, not getting paid on time is an administrative burden of just the follow-up, but for others, it can have a material impact on cash flow. Do you know when your suppliers are not getting paid? Five. This week on the Art of Procurement podcast, we feature a recent AOP Live webinar with Sean Carell, Head of iValuer's Public Sector Team, and Jared McAdoo, Senior Product Marketing Manager, also at iValuer. As part of the discussion, we discuss the barrier of insurance requirements that often stops large companies working with small, innovative suppliers, and what could be done about this age-old problem. Over to Jared. You know, that's a difficult question because... It, it, um, but it's a, it's a, you know, it's an important question to ask, and it'll change by the size that you organization you are. Is, you know, can you absorb that? Um, you know, there, there is a risk, you know, with doing this. There, there's a high upside on, on, on this, but be able to look at some of those sacred cows where you weren't willing to take the risk in the past in order to turn that over. I think each organization needs to look at the, the service, the commodity they're providing. Um, you know, a lot of these requirements, and, and at least in my life, is you develop in some insurance requirements, and, and it gets pushed down to use a procurement for pre- professional, and you apply it across to everything. Um, and then you really have to ask yourself the hard question, and a lot of times go back to legal and risk to say, does this really need to apply to this category? What is the risk to the organization that, that we really have with this? So again, looking for those opportunities to do that, and you have to be smart where you can waive those. Um, obviously you don't want to uh, waive some insurance on somebody who's yeah. maybe cutting up, coming on site to cut down trees, um, <laughs> you know, on some of those, but you know, some other areas, you really have some opportunities, um, to really say, Hey, is it one size fits all? Where can I, uh, give a little bit on those, which I think Sean alluded to earlier. It's, you know, a lot of this is really in, in Phil mentioned the barriers to entry is you know, sometimes we just have to take a hard look at ourselves. Um, on what we've built. And, you know, it's been around a long time and it's worked, but is it really necessary? Um, is a little bit of risk worth some payoff on this? Um, you know, so that's where, you know, I've seen some people is really starting to take a look at that. And, uh, you know, where can I bend? Where can I be flexible, um, you know, on these type of items? And, you know, and it helps when you, you get a good process down and you can qualify suppliers and you understand where those risks are and you're capturing it. Are your insurance requirements a roadblock to working with smaller businesses? And if so, can you start to look into a more flexible approach? Four. How relevant is spend under management as a metric to judge procurement performance as a whole or at a category level? That was a question we posed on the Atta Procurement blog in an article titled, Who Cares About Spend Under Management? The answer to that question, well, it's not the business stakeholders. We've used spend under management as a way to try and gauge and then drive improvement in the reach of procurement. However, it's interpreted in so many different ways by different teams that it really is meaningless when benchmarking one procurement team to the next. So what could we use instead? Well, improved options might include the percentage of a team or a business unit or a department's budget that is on a contract or is with preferred suppliers could be spend that can be purchased with self-guided buying or with certified diverse suppliers. It could be with suppliers that have performance scores above a certain level or that has been competitively negotiated or sourced in a particular time period. This could even differ based on each stakeholder group rather than just looking at this collectively from a procurement perspective. 
knowing which option or options to pick for each stakeholder group will be a combination of corporate priorities, factors influencing those stakeholders and available data. Being able to connect with them on metrics such as these should not only hold more meaning, it will engage them and increase compliance. This is Procurement 6 from Art of Procurement. To get notified every time an episode is published, go to artofprocurement.com slash subscribe. Three. Last week, an article by my partner at Art of Procurement and Procurement 6 co-host Kelly Barner was featured by LinkedIn as their global idea of the day. The article, called Building Inclusive Supply Chains, Connecting Corporations and Diverse Owned Businesses, takes on supply diversity. It's a topic of increasing importance, particularly in the US, but one that a number of procurement teams continue to struggle with. Kelly explores the roadblocks and perceptions that need to be overcome. For example, on the corporate side, how do you discover diverse suppliers that offer the products and services that you need without slowing down the buying process? How should you document and track diverse supplier ownership? How can you demonstrate that working with diverse owned suppliers does not mean paying higher rates or taking on additional risk? While on the diverse business side, they want to demonstrate that these perceptions particularly of increased costs and additional risk, are just that, perceptions. Change is hard, progress feels slow, but the momentum is certainly building for greater partnerships between large businesses and diverse suppliers. Two. In other news, company earnings season is up and running here in the US with many organizations citing supply chain issues as an inhibitor to growth. Apple is one such company. CEO and former head of supply chain Tim Cook suggested that supply chain pressures were beginning to subside, a comment that helped Apple stock increase by nearly 5%. However, many other smaller firms continue to cite the supply chain, and specifically the increasing costs of goods and services, as having a negative impact on profit margins. But coming back to Apple, while they have had the pricing power to maintain margins in Q4 last year, CFO Luca Maestri told the Financial Times that supply chain problems that are plaguing swaths of the economy are costing Apple more than $6 billion in revenue in the quarter. And they're just the latest company in a wave of others to make bold public pronouncements. More than ever before, these earnings reports are demonstrating the impact that procurement and supply chain can have on the top line of the business and not just the bottom line. Being able to make that connection with your executive team will have a material impact on how procurement is perceived once these pressures subside. One. Are you ready for AOP Digital Outcomes? It's a brand new digital conference, Mart of Procurement, that will take place between March the 8th and 10th, 2022. Each day for two hours a day, we're going to be taking a different approach to discussing procurement transformation and focusing on what matters most, the outcomes the digital transformations deliver. Through the event, we'll focus on three key themes, driving strategy, speed, and scale. Register for free, and you'll not only get access to the live event, but also all of the event recordings. And also on February the 10th, Colin Glazier, VP of Solutions Consulting at Zip, and Joe Frederick, Senior Director of Procurement and Sourcing at Snowflake, will share their unique perspectives in an AOP webinar on what qualities and actions define a world-class procurement experience. We'll also talk about the most common friction points that exist in procurement processes and the impact that they can have on the business and how technology can help solve these issues and what people and process steps need to be taken first. Thinking about the stakeholder and the, the employee experience is so important, especially as we are in the midst of the great resignation. Just go to artofprocurement.com calendar to find out more. And you can find all the links associated with stories mentioned today at the show notes page for this episode at artofprocurement.com slash podcast. Thanks for listening. We'll be back next Friday at 6 a.m. U.S. Eastern Time. If you've enjoyed this pod, help us grow and tell your peers to search for Procurement 6 wherever they get their podcasts.